got quite a bit of rain coming down today. Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south, more specifically, Williamston, Kentucky. And as we were coming in, we were hit with quite a bit of rain, but fortunately, we are in the perfect spot for a rainy day, because we are at the Ark Encounter. Yes, behind me is a full-sized replica of Noah's Ark. I visited here probably about four years ago when they did had their grand opening, when they first opened uh, this, this life-size Ark here in Kentucky. Um, so I've been very curious, been wanting to get back here for years to see what is new, what they've added. Because when, when I first went here, they just opened. So we, uh, we just saw the, the, the first set of exhibits. So I'm excited to see what has been added, what has been changed, what additions there has been. I know this uh, arc it's, uh, was put out by an organization known as Answers in Genesis, a religious organization um, headed by a man known as Australian man known as Ken Ham, and uh, their you know their beliefs they are they are young Earth creationists. They believe that humans lived at the same time as dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. So they do believe that there was dinosaurs on the ark. So we are about to head up inside that magnificent ark and see what lies in its belly. Please, follow me. I think these are cutouts of Noah's sons and their wives. If you listen closely, there's a tremendous amount of bullfrogs in that pond. Yeah, these cutouts must all be Noah's different sons. There was a time uh, where I probably could have named all of them, but I cannot think for the life of me the name of Noah's sons. So if you know the name of uh, Noah's sons and their wives, leave a comment in the comments section. Yeah, the Ark is quite spectacular. Close, just massive, massive boat. If you look down here, you can see this ramp. This, I guess, would be the ramp that they would use to get animals up to the ark. You can see the the one entrance door there. That's not where we're entering, but that's where the animals would have entered. Yeah, just look at the huge size of that ark. I guess we enter from underneath. Here we head in through the queue line underneath the ship. Now I always get criticized. People tell me that I shouldn't call ships boats. But I always get confused on the difference between a ship and a boat. Now you had ark in there. Is an ark a ship? Is an ark a boat? I, I don't I don't know. These these nautical things are too complex for me. Oh you can hear the thunder clapping. Now as we enter the Ark, you can see how the construction of the Ark is done, how the nails are put in. Big nails, big nails to hold together a big ship. Some animal cages over here. Oh yeah, you can hear that thunder and lightning scaring the little animals. You can actually smell, they actually have a scent to it. It really smells like a, like a hamster cage. Oh, you can hear the animals, you can hear them drinking out of the bottle there. Oh boy, can you hear all those animals? Can you imagine what a real ark would have smelled like and sounded like? Rows and rows of 
animals, which, you know, makes sense. Had to have two of every living creature. Whoa, you can hear thunder, you can hear rain, you can hear animal noises. I think I heard a pig squealing. We have a mural of Noah. You see him holding up the ark in his hands. All the different animals on the boat. You can see deer, giraffe, it's a bat, a pterodactyl, a brontosaurus. Yeah, you can hear the sound of the arc shifting, the beams moving underwater. The creaking. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of animals in here. The noises. See all these pots? I guess the pots would have supplies. Maybe some food to feed all these animals. Just look at all the little cages. This would be the small animals, various rodents that uh, Noah would have collected. And here is Noah and his family in prayer. Just praying for safety during the storm. You can see Noah moving there. This is the reptiles and amphibian section. They actually show you how they they kept all the animals fed. You see from this diagram, they have the uh, the reptiles living in these pots, the cloth lids. In the center here, they're explaining there is a a moth farm in all these boxes. So you got moths uh, pupating in here and then they would fly into t tubes connected to all these pots and that would feed the reptiles and amphibians. Oh yeah, you can see in this cross section here the different bugs and larvae growing in there and then you see the tube right there. The tube would come out here where you have the little lizards and they would snack on the pupated larva. See some cages with some larger animals. See some bears in there. And what this sign over here was explaining was that um, it said that the ark didn't necessarily have different kinds of, of bears. It says that there was no polar bears on the ark, that uh, they would just bring one type of bear and then they would, I guess, I don't know, evolve into other types of bears after uh, returning from the ark and being set loose in the wild. See, so I guess the animals are divided into kinds. So this is be the sloth kind. This is the section of sloth-like animals brought on the ark. So those are pretty cute. Over here we have some of the dinosaurs. And these are almost like stegosaurus-like dinosaurs, or dinosaurs with big fins on them. These are the, the Cassiid, Cassiid kind. Uh, these are pres presumed extinct, I guess. Um, I don't know, these are very interesting looking. They look almost like tortoises with no shells. Paraleosaur. Here all those. Dinosaur grunts and noises. So I guess these are like um, pterodactyl type animals. It says Quetzalcoatlus. I actually have a Moldorama, but Quetzalcoatlus. See them in there. It's a, a flying uh, dinosaur-like animal. It says Noah didn't need to bring any of these showing all these sea creatures, all these different aquatic animals. I guess the theory is that they would just live in the water. Um, the explanation over here says that uh, freshwater animals would have lived in like uh, freshwater pockets within uh, the giant ocean. Did you know up to 85 kinds of dinosaurs were on the ark, including two Tyrannosaurus, two Stegosaurids, two Ceratopsids, and two Brachiosaurids. Says no one didn't need to bring all these. I guess he didn't need to bring a bunch of big dinosaurs. He just brought two little baby ones 
that would uh, populate the earth with the different species. Here is the deer that would have been brought on the ark. You can hear the little snorting pigs, little, little ark piglets. You can look up here and see the different stories of the ark. Famously, the ark was made using cubits as measurements. It shows you how long a cubit is there. It's about 20.4 inches, about the length from someone's elbow to their fingertips. Here we see a model of the ark that we're currently in. Closely in there you can see all the different animal cages, how compacted it is. Here's Noah's bat house. Peek in there and see the bats hanging and hear them squeaking. All right, headed up to the second story of the ark. We see an exhibit on the fall of man. We see Eve taking some grapes on advice of that serpent and sharing them with Adam. Adam's sin brings death. They are now forced to sacrifice animals. God banishes Adam and Eve. Cain murders Abel. Oh my gosh. Look at Cain. That poor, poor Abel never saw it coming. Descent into darkness. Polygamy. Music. Now, metal, metalworking? These are, these are, these are our, our descents into dark, just giants. So this is a representation of a godless world. We see the um, the people here in this Colosseum cheering, the cheering onlookers as they watch this group of humans fight off a giant and a dinosaur. Wow, that is... I've not seen anything like that before. Abuse of creation. We see a, a party here. Some uh, debauchery going on. We see a dude passed out on the couch. Oh my gosh. We see a giant idol. A man with a giant snake hat. A golden snake man that people are giving offerings to. Here we have some more animals. The alligator kind. Looks like Noah just brought a couple little tiny alligators with him. Here they are right next to uh, some hyenas. And uh, I'm not sure what these are. These are cyanogenathid. And of course anyone that wants to help me figure out what these are, let me know. Oh, okay. The, these had possum-like bodies, so I guess the are uh, are, are it's a type of possum. It says they're considered to be non-mammalian synapsids. Uh, they were more like mammals than lizards or crocodiles. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused on what exactly that is, but uh, they're kind of cute, aren't they? These are pachytuses. Let's see the. Pachytus, he almost, I don't know what he looks like, almost like a seal, kind of, like a seal, a half seal, half dog, maybe? It says, do these look like whales? Okay, it's saying that, I guess, some people believe that Pachytids uh, evolved into whales, but they're saying that's possible, but, but they don't think so. Down here, these are adorable. These are like little saber-toothed cats. Almost looks like a cross between a saber-toothed cat and a koala. Look at these little dinosaurs. What are these? And I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing everything and I'm reading a bunch of these these names, and Entelodont says that they're called Terminator Pigs. Sounds like that would be a pretty cool movie, Terminator Pig. Okay, it says this is the 
one kind of cattle that uh, Noah brought on the ark. Were there unicorns on the ark? Now the Bible does mention unicorns by name, but uh, what they're saying here is these are the unicorns that were on the ark. They're actually little, little tiny rhinoceroses. I don't have much of a horn. Yep, check out those unicorns. Really interesting collection of animals. Like the dinosaurs right next to the unicorns. Look like some primitive giraffe-like creatures. So here we're headed into the spooky animal encounters. I don't know, we might end up getting jump scared. It says, what do animals do when Noah's family is sleeping? I guess we're about to find out. Oh, open here. Uh, it's just a mirror. It says, can you make this face in the mirror? Uh, all right. Open here. Okay, I think these are all mirror gags. Yep, yep, yep. Hey. What's in there? Oh! He just, a weasel hissed at me. Spooky bats up there. Down here. Touch the skunk. Sweet. Oh! Sprayed me. Oh yeah, this section is kind of spooky. Oh, air cannons going off everywhere. It's like a haunted house. This is the second spookiest Noah's Ark I've ever been in. What is that? Oh my god! Oh my god! That was super spooky. Boxes are creaking. Oh, see a snake right there. That. A little swinging monkey. So this would have been the one dog that Noah brought on the ark and it shows all these different uh, varieties of dog that would have would have uh, spawned from that. What's a, what's a crab eating dog? I didn't know dogs were big into eating crabs. Here would have been the cat that Noah took on the ark. Good to know that there was cats represented on, on the ark and I don't know, I wonder how they kept them from killing all the little rodents. Because that's why they were packed in those tight little cages. Archaeopteridigus. Uh, I guess uh, it says here that it was considered to be a uh, evolutionary point between birds and uh, dinosaurs. But according to this chart it led to nothing saying that this was just a just a bird. Just, just a weird old bird. Here they talk about the uh, the evolution of uh, apes. Of course, uh, they don't consider uh, humans to be part of the ape evolution. So these are the horses that were brought on the ark. You can see two tiny horses. It seems like Noah picked little tiny versions of animals so he could fit more of them on the ark. Like these tiny little hippos right here. We see a couple of little stegosauruses playing. These scary little guys down here. These velociraptor looking guys. That'd be pretty scary if one of them got loose. But the sign over there is actually saying that they believed that most animals on the ark, even ones that are traditionally carnivorous, uh, were possibly vegetarians. It says these guys were related to horses and tapers, but uh, I don't know, they look like like giant ground sloths to me, which are some of my favorite animals. This exhibit on animal maintenance shows how the animals were cared for in their containers. See the food would be placed down into that funnel. Just that uh, Noah's sons would sweep up the feces there at the bottom. Here's how water and waste would have been handled on the ark. We have uh, rain collectors here, like a rain barrel. That would, I guess, fall down into the animal's drinking water. And then they have a waste, a waste tank, almost like an RV. You can see these buckets bringing up poop. Oh yes, poop up this side and pee into this side. And I guess, you know, 
After 40 days, that'd be getting near the top. Here we have Noah's office. You can see reminders. Animatronic Noah right there. And there's Noah's wife. And look at this. This is a uh, a globe, a wood, or I guess a, a stone globe that's been carved. So it took me a while to plan the construction, and there were some difficulties to overcome. But God is wise and knows everything. Look at the dove. And He provides all we need. So you can ask Noah Where? different questions. You came to visit. Uh, let me see what's going to ask him. God Why don't you look like friend. you are 600 years old? Why don't I look 600? What do you mean? I look about the same age as any other 600 year old person I've met. Well, except for my wife, of course. She doesn't look a day past 400. <laughs> if you say something. Imzara still as beautiful as she was on our wedding day. So this would be like the library of the Ark. You see all the scrolls stored in there. Some sketches there of the different animals. You would have some animal carvings up there on top. It's the woodworking shop. You can hear the wood being carved. Here's the uh, blacksmith shop. Although wasn't metalworking one of the one of the downfalls of mankind. And here is the fairy tale arc. We have some cartoonish characters in here. So we'll head inside. It's an interesting section here. They're actually condemning all these books, showing the books that portray the uh, arc in a child child friendly way. Oh, well, look at this, even, even calling out the precious moments in Noah's Ark storybook. As it puts it right here, attention, flood was God's judgment of a wicked world, not a happy story about adorable animals. It says cute arcs are dangerous, they distort God's word and ultimately malign his character. We have the serpent here from the Garden of Eden, he says, if I could convince you that the flood was not real, and I conv convince you that heaven and hell are not real. Huh. I mean, I can't say they don't necessarily have a point. It says everyone died except the eight people in the ark. So yeah, a story about everyone in the world dying. For kids. Sorry guys, you sure are cute, but remember, everybody dies. on why the figure wasn't talking, but it says this is uh, Japheth's wife, Raina, uh, ponders sincere questions many people wrestle with today. Okay, so she's here, she's, she's sweeping, and she is pondering questions like why does a loving God allow so much death and suffering? Is God cruel? Why is death? Was it just for God to judge the whole world? It is quite a bit to ponder. Here is the door from the inside, the giant door that all the animals would have marched in. And you can see, make out a cross right there. All right, time to head up to the third floor. We saw how all the animals lived. Here's the living quarters for the humans. It's a Shem and Ariel's suite. You know, this is pretty, this is pretty nice. I wouldn't mind going on a 40 day cruise and these digs. This is Japheth. He's uh, playing his flute there for his wife, Raina. 
she was the one that was downstairs pondering, but now she's doing some painting. Looks like she's using those little oyster shells, those little paint cups. Looks like they have plenty of produce and some herbs hanging up there. Looks like they're even doing a little bit of on arc gardening here. It's a little troughs full of dirt. They're growing some uh, veggies. Here is Shem's wife, Ariel. She's working here in the kitchen, preparing some uh, yummy dinner for uh, the crew. Yeah, nice little kitchen here. we got lots of garlic. So yeah, make some nice garlicky food for dinner. Here is Ham, along with his wife, Kazia, and they are, they're stringing some beans. He's brought quite a few uh, beans in. It's the aviary, got uh, all the different birds that uh, Noah and his family cared for. But over here, you can see Noah, his wife down there. But Noah is releasing the dove, sending out the dove to find land. Uh, what does he have? I believe an olive branch. Is it an olive branch in his, uh, in his beak? Here's actually an exhibit on how the ark holds up against other arcs. This is the biblical arc here. This is problems with this arc. None. It was perfectly designed to survive the flood. But I uh, talked about these other arcs that uh, says could not have, uh, have survived. This is the Bantu tail. It says problems. No tree is large enough to hold all the people, the animals. I guess the legend was, it was carved out of one tree. Here is the Wama Ball legend, the double raft. It says problems, people, animals, and supplies to be washed overboard. The Akkadian tablet. It's a very interesting shaped arc. Let's see what the problems are. It says the problems are that the sides are too short to prevent waves from washing and sinking the boat. Here's the arc from the Epic of Gilgamesh. You can see the little, little person down there. Big box shaped arc. What's the problems with this? says, oh, no lighting and ventilation for lower decks. Tilting and rocking would make the voyage unbearable. So, saying here that the biblical ark, the only ark that could do it. Here's the Museum of the Bible. There's actually a full museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C., but I guess this is a satellite version of that, where they have some old documents, some various Bibles, and Bible pieces from various time periods. Actually, I have a virtual reality attraction where you can, I guess, ride the ark and really be there on the boat with Noah. Exiting through the gift shop, we can see that there's more than two of every animal in here. Oh, look at that. Little, little, little possum on the ark. So we leave the ark, we head into the Ararat Ridge Zoo. So yes, they actually have real animals here at the ark. Now it is a little rainy out, so I don't know how many animals are gonna be out and about. I spot a kangaroo over there. See a sloth in there. He's, he's itching his butt. Oh, look at that. There's a little armadillo running around the ground there. That's, that's super cute. What you doing there, Mr. Armadillo? You might, hey, lemurs. How are you guys like, doing? There was big like thunder and lightning, but then again, you might have been in the area where there's actual recorded right. thunder and lightning. <laughs> hey, Mr. Donkey. What are you doing? There's a lot of donkeys in the Bible, isn't there? There is some current construction. I'm not sure what is gonna be in that building right there. This is where they have their virtual uh, reality center, the, tr the, the truth traveler, they call it, where uh, you can simulate what it is like to ride on the ark. So thank you for joining me here today at the Ark Encounter here in Kentucky. I did want to give a little disclaimer, you know, obviously any religious views or scientific views shown 
in this video are not necessarily mine. They are the views of the Ark Encounter. Of course, uh, I, I did my best to understand their point of view, to, 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 to sh show what they believe. Of course, I could be misunderstanding it. I could be misrepresenting it. So, you know, take that into account. Um, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, if you like these videos, please consider checking out uh, some of my other videos. I've been to the 48 continental United States filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, haunted houses, museums, and other fun stuff in all of them. If you'd like to uh, help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling some goodies in the Etsy shop. All that just helps keep this boat on the water, this train on the tracks, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, this once in the bag. And by the way, a happy Pride Month from the Carpetbagger.